millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high quality, grass fed, and grass finished beef, organic chicken, pork raised crate free, and wild caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at ButcherBox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious, and all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com etm. And use code ETM to choose your free offer and get $20 off. We're rounding the corner, my friend, on the end of 2023. So I'd love to invite you into one of my favorite episodes of the year, my best of. We'll cover money apps, programs, education, books, and podcasts, and so much more. All right, let's start talking. Welcome back to Everyone's Talking Money. I am your host, Shauna Game, and this podcast is dedicated to really helping you celebrate self-worth over net worth. And this episode is absolutely one of my very favorites. I get questions throughout the year to share my favorite money tools and apps and all sorts of things. And although I sprinkle them in episodes as we go through the year, I also love doing this end of the year, uh, just kind of recap and, and pulling it all together for you because I know that it's really great sometimes to have just one central place to go to to figure out the best of. If you would like a detailed list of everything that I mentioned here, you can go to the show notes or you can download the list at etmpod.link slash best 2023. That's etmpod.link slash best 2023 or just easier. You don't even have to, you don't even have to remember it. Just go straight to the show notes. All right, so let's dive in and talk about the best budgeting apps and software. I have tried them all, and I have switched back and forth a few times. I found a few favorites. I kind of have my own system for how I manage money. I have an Excel template that I use where I look forward to the month, and I set my my numbers, my spending plan, and then I look back at the end of the month and say, okay, where did I actually spend money? What is actually going on? But I also use an app to make that a lot easier. I'm a big fan of Monarch. I'll talk about that in a second. And I know that, you know, Mint deciding to leave the budgeting game, it's really left a lot of people high and dry. They really were the OG when it came to budgeting. And it's not always fun to learn a new system, like specifically when we're talking about budgeting, because you you know, you get to like and love your your favorites, you like the way the interface looks, you know, all of that good stuff. And so, you know, finding something new isn't isn't necessarily great. And then I also know there's this debate between free versus paid. So obviously, if you use your own Excel template, or if you used Mint in the past, those were free. And most of the 
budgeting apps going forward, those are paid. And so there's a lot of friction of, gosh, I have to pay for another thing. Well, I think, you know, the thing when we're talking about Mint, it might have been a free app, but there were ads all over the place. And you were, your data was essentially being marketed and sold for advertising spots. So it really wasn't free. I mean, it was a free to you as a user, but I like the idea of having to pay to play, especially when it comes to money. I don't want you to spend too much money, but there is an invested interest in spending money on an app. I think it it helps you create the the habits and the behavior r- around, you know, this is something I paid for. Like I should probably actually use it. So if you've listened to the episodes lately, you know, you know, you know, I am a big fan of Monarch for budgeting. I love them. I love that I can use the desktop program or an app. And I just love that everything's in one place. Like it feels very streamlined for me. I can see investments. I can see goals. I can see, uh, you know, my spending. I can see the income coming in. So they would take the, the pick number one for me for sure when it comes to a budgeting app. But you've got to try a few of them. You've got to see what feels really intuitive to you. And sometimes that is just a little bit of like a cumbersome process. I would say my second choice, like right behind Monarch is you need a budget. We've had them on the show several times. These are great for people who really love details It takes a little bit more time to kind of get up and running, but I love their approach of zero-based budgeting, which if you're not familiar with it, it's this idea that you want to use every dollar in your bank account. So we're used to thinking that if I see like a thousand dollars left in my in my checking account, like, oh my gosh, I feel so good, right? There's all these thoughts and emotions that are that are playing into that. Like I did a good job and everything's great. But the problem is the money is just sitting in your bank account. It's not doing anything. It's not, you're not using it as a tool. You're using it as an emotional, uh, like emotional support system. And so what I love about You Need a Budget is they encourage you, I mean, this is their whole system to utilize all of your money. So take that thousand dollars and slice and dice it, put some towards a goal, put some towards paying off debt, put some in your travel fund, put some in your investments, right? You're, you're utilizing your money. And that's just such a better way to think about managing your money than being stuck on this idea that you have to have so much left at the end of the month. Or if you have a certain amount of money left at the end of the month, well, let me just go out and spend it, right? I'd rather have you auto-direct that money towards your goals so it's it's helping to really build wealth for you. Uh, another option is, you know, so many banks right now are offering budgeting tools that work seamlessly with your checking account. So, you can go in and you can see, you know, what's going on. You can create your own budget. They they vary depending on the, you know, specific bank that you have, but that is another option that is available to you. All right, let's move on into investing. I know this is probably one of your favorite topics. There has been a lot of noise around investing. Everybody wants to do it. Everybody wants to make money, and I do not blame you. But when it comes to education, the question is, well, where do you learn about this stuff, right? It it isn't taught places. You don't go to college usually and learn about investing. And so you're left to kind of piece things together. You know, we do a lot of episodes on this show and on a lot of other money podcasts talk a lot about investing. So there's a lot of free education that you can get out there. But when it comes to paid education, there are a couple of places that I really love We have had uh, Amanda from Dumpster Doggy on the show a few times, and I would say if you are just starting out or you're looking to get your sea legs behind you um, in investing, maybe investing in a retirement account, her invested development course really takes the cake. She has this natural ability of explaining investing concepts in a way that makes sense. She uses a lot of memes, a lot of like pop culture references to break down these complex topics. And I love she offers like regular office hours and investing parties and so much more. And so for the price of her course, I think it is one of the best values out there. You are going to get so much great 
education. And you're really going to feel like you're part of a community that is invested in you investing. So uh, I would definitely check that out. If you're looking for maybe more like stock investing education, so outside of your retirement plans, I would check out Real Life Trading. We've had them on the show as well. And I love all of their free stock investing education. A lot of what they offer for free, you would have to pay a lot of money for in a lot of other courses. And I'm constantly blown away by their content and what they essentially are just kind of giving away. Now, they have paid courses as well. They have uh, different uh, masterminds that you can go to. They have kind of like weekends where you can go and you can learn all about investing, stock investing in that weekend. So they have a lot of like extra things that you can do. But their free education around stock investing, I think is like bar none. It, it, it is so fantastic. I wish it had been around years ago when I was really, you know, starting to to learn and dive into stock investing myself. One of the benefits of this kind of like course driven world that we operate in. Another stock investing kind of honorable mention is the Trade and Travel course by Terry Igioma. She's been on the show as well, and she started the course to teach people how to invest as a side hustle. So rather than thinking, you know, I need to make, I don't know, $10,000 in a month, think about it as a side hustle, right? If you could make some extra money that would pay off debt or pay off a bill that you have. So she is a former teacher, and I love how she explains investing concepts that are difficult to grasp. She just has that very natural kind of teacher mentality to her. And I love everything that that she's done. I've taken a couple of her workshops and courses and things. And I mean, I learn so much. And I just feel like When it comes to investing, if this is something that feels scary to you, but it feels like a goal that you have, you really want somebody who feels like they're a good friend. (laughs) They know their stuff, uh, but also like they're a good friend and they're going to help break it down. Um, So this course, her trade and travel course, it has gone up in price in the last year, but I still think there's a lot of value for what she charges. And you're also part of a community as well, really in, in her courses. So There are a lot of times where you can, um, you know, you can lunch and learn and you can hear from other experts. So they're really dedicated towards helping you grow in your, you know, investing world and your investing uh, wealth and all of that. So those would be kind of my top picks when we're talking about uh, best investing education. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. 
That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H, M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash ETM for your extended 30-day free trial. Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, Honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T-A-L-K-A-N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash T-O-S for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet, finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. All right, now we're rolling into best online banks. And gosh, we've we've had some interesting things transpire this year in the banking world. We've had a couple of big bank collapses. And, you know, I think it's tough when we talk about bank because you always just assume you put money in, in the bank and that that money is going to be there and you expect it to, to be there. That is just right? We don't even have to think about that. And so I think when there are bank failures and debacles like we've seen this year, it really makes a lot of people question. Although, you know, now we're sitting here in uh, December and um, you probably don't even remember that some of that happened this year. So we're very kind of fickle too in our memory. But I will just say, you know, as I dive into this category, there is a lot of, I don't know, remorse or pushba- pushback on uh, big banks, right? You know them, the the Chases, the Bank of America, the Wells Fargo. And there are a lot of things that those banks don't do well. I would, you know, wholeheartedly agree. I am I'm not the biggest fan at all. That's just my own personal experience. And it's impossible for you to know their inside business world. It's impossible for you to know what they do with your money and how they are actually spending and leveraging your money. It's impossible to know those things. You could ask all the right questions and still not know that information. So I I, I just, I want to sprinkle this part of the conversation with, it's hard to know what is the right decision when it comes to your bank? And I think a lot of people feel very strongly about keeping your money in the big kind of old guard traditional banks. And then a lot of people want something different, new and fresh. So I'm going to talk about some of my favorites for kind of that new and fresh category, if that's something that you're interested in. And I have two favorites in this category. 
I will say, you know, again, for these categories and, and, and anything on this best of list, like do your own research, uh, especially it comes to bank and savings accounts. Like find out as much as you can. There's always going to be negative comments. There's always going to be people that hate a bank or hate, um, you know, a specific institution. That is just the way it's going to work, right? But figure out what feels good to you and suss out as best as you can. There, there's a lot of variety and flavors out there right now. And, you know, I think the biggest kind of overarching thing is you should not be paying a monthly bank fee. <laughs> if you don't know if you are, please pause this episode right now and go check your most recent bank statement. But you should not be paying a monthly maintenance bank fee. It's, you know, sometimes it's $6 to $10 a month, but this is every month. And this is just something where, again, if we're going to be smart with our money, we could just use that money on something else, like a million other things rather than just paying a fee. So that's one of the great features of a lot of online banks is they don't have monthly fees. And I think that's definitely a, still a, a topic of conversation that we need to talk about. So my one favorite is Ally Bank. And Ally is an OG in the online bank world. They also have banking locations. One of the features I like is that you can open multiple high yield savings accounts. So you can set up different buckets and you can name each bucket to a different goal. And the reason I like this is because your brain then can separate like, oh, here's my travel fund. Okay, let's see that balance. And oh, here's my, I want to buy a house fund. And here's my... A gift fund for the year, right? So you can see all of these different buckets and you can see where you're at in, in the savings with those. So I just, I really like that. I think it's really helpful, specifically when we talk about goals and savings, that you can separate them out. It just, it helps your brain like really get on board <laughs> with this savings concept. Uh, you can also get paid up to two days early with their direct deposit feature. Many of these banks have some sort of variation of this now. And you can also set up a joint account, which if you're in a relationship is, I think, something that is really important. So rather you, if you just set up a joint account for, you know, the, the, the housing expenses, and then you have a separate account for kind of your spending money, however you want to do it. But I think having a joint account, if you are in a committed relationship or a marriage, is really important because this is a partnership after all. And I know that it's scary, but I think you can really set up some some good, you know, guardrails around all of this so you can make it a really equitable and happy and good experience. So you do not need to be arguing with your partner all the time. You just don't need to do that. All right. Another favorite is called Varo, V-A-R-O. And they have a lot of the same features. They have no fees, an early payday feature. They also have a credit billing feature and you can get cash advance up to $500 with zero interest. But I just, I really like, I don't, I like their mission. I like their motto. And I, I really of all the online banks other than Ally, they are the one that I kind of recommend the most. Um, you know, there's, there's also Chime. There's a lot of people who feel strongly one way or the other about Chime. So you know, it's, it's up to you to decide what works for you. And I think, again, I'm going to beat a, a drum to death here, but this is where it becomes really important to set out what are your money values? What are the things that you value or don't value in a specific product or a company, right? What are the things that mean a lot to you? Like, I know a lot of people don't want to um, put their money in a bank that invests in fossil fuels or whatever it might be. Well, that's important information for you to know and research. And sometimes you can't figure out the exact answer. But that's at least something like you can start eliminating certain, uh, you know, companies just based off of your own values. But when you're out there just kind of searching and you don't know what's important to you, it's really easy to just kind of get lost in the in the shuffle. So, you know, when you're looking for a bank, I think here are a few features I would look for. Obviously, the no monthly fee, absolutely have to have that. No minimum, right? That you don't have to keep a minimum balance. That's really important because if we go back to this idea of utilizing all of our money, like we don't obviously want to run out of money, but we want to make sure we're utilizing all of our money. 
I think also cash advance is is a, a good feature and access to a wide ATM network. And then I like the banks that have a high yield savings option because I can just kind of have that built in and I don't have to have an, a, you know, um, an exterior high yield savings account. So those are some of the things that I would look for if if I was choosing a new online bank. I'm Samantha Cole, host of the new season of Understood, The Pornhub Empire. Over the course of four episodes, I'll tell you how a horny YouTube knockoff in Canada came to dominate the porn world, only to shatter their cheeky reputation in a massive scandal. The Pornhub Empire is a new season of Understood from the CBC. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. Next, we're going to be talking about best high yield savings accounts. So all of these right now are somewhere between 4.25% and 5% as I'm recording this episode. And the important thing to remember is that as interest rates go up, these interest rates will also go up, but the inverse will happen. So if we get into a situation in 2024, which many people are predicting that interest rates are going to go down in 2024 these rates are going to go down as well. So if you are in a specific high yield savings account and you're there primarily due to the interest rate they're offering you now, I just want you to buckle up and be prepared that that interest rate is probably going to come down some, right? Because it's just how this works. But what I do want you to remember is that a high yield savings account is always, and I can't say that word very often, but is always going to give you higher interest than the interest you're going to get in your traditional bank accounts. Traditional bank accounts are going to offer you somewhere around 0.01, 0.02%. As of right now, right, then that doesn't change very often, right? It, it stays in this very small margin. That's not a lot of interest over your checking account. So, the high yield savings account is going to pay you more interest. That is just a flat out statement I can make. I am such a big fan of a high yield savings account. I would, I mean, I suggest everyone having a high yield savings account. It works just like your regular bank savings account. You can move money in and out. You get a debit card. You can access your money. Like it's the same thing. It's it's safe money. It's your money. You can move it all around but you're just going to have a higher interest rate. And the reason that a lot of these online banks are able to pay you a higher interest rate is because they do not have brick and mortar locations for their stores. So you cannot get in your car and drive up to this specific bank location. But my question is, how many of us actually go to our bank anymore? My guess is that you primarily do online banking. And you might not even use ATMs that are specifically at your bank. So I think the you know the world has changed and it's it's allowed us to get to a place where online banks just kind of make sense. So I actually have four picks for this category, and it's in no specific order. But Ally Bank, I just talked about them as one of the best online banks. I love their high yield savings account. They would probably be my number one, but. Their interest is a little bit lower than some of the other banks listed here. So, you know, again, this is, comes back to your values and, and what you want. So the second choice would be CIT Bank. Uh, the third choice would be Wealthfront. They have a really competitive high yield savings account right now. And Discover has a good one as well. You know, they're not just credit cards. They do all sorts of different uh, financial products, but they've got a really good high yield savings account. So, I think the the most important thing when you're shopping for a high yield savings account is, you know, find one that's that's reputable, uh, a name that maybe you've heard before um, is, is certainly <laughs> something I would look for. Again, you can look for the best bank right now that is paying the highest interest. But just remember that when we get into a lower interest rate environment, which is probably going to come next year those rates are going to trickle down some. So you're still always going to be earning more than the traditional banks, but you know it's going to ebb and flow. And a lot of people are like, well, Shauna, does it really matter? Like, I don't have that much in my savings account anyway. Does it matter if I have it in a traditional bank or a high yield savings account? And my rule of thumb is just always more money is more money. So if you were walking down the street and there was a $20 laying on the street and it was not anybody's $20 and it was up for you to grab, 
Would you grab it or would you not? I I surely hope you would grab it, right? Again, it's nobody else's money. Like, let's take away all the like, what ifs, what ifs. It was just $20 laying on the floor for you to pick up or not pick up. <laughs> it's the same sort of concept when we're talking about a high yield savings account. All right. Okay, let's move on to some other best money tools that I use that I personally love. Um, I use a virtual private network. I don't know if you're familiar with that at all, but um, I log on when my computer starts. I am automatically log on to my VPN. I use Surfshark. And I, I just think it's really important to use a VPN because in the rise of like all of these online hacks and data breaches and things like that, specifically if you're taking your computer or your laptop and maybe you're working like at a coffee shop or you're checking your bank account balance, you know, when you when you travel, things like that, like you really want to be so careful. And a VPN is just the sort of added layer of security that really helps protect you and uh, protect your, you know, financial identity. Another tool I lose is called LastPass. And I use LastPass for my password reminders because I have far too many passwords and there is no way that I would ever remember them. And so the trick that I do with LastPass is I store all my passwords in there and Jeff, my husband, has access to that as well. So if something were to happen to me, he also has all of the passwords. He does not have to try and figure this out on his own. But I log out of LastPass Every time that I'm going somewhere publicly to use my computer, I can always log back in and like have access to my passwords, but that's just an extra layer of protection for me. But I like that it's this, you know, kind of hub where all of my logins and passwords are stored. Let's talk about life insurance. You know, we haven't done an episode in quite a while on life insurance, but we're going to be doing one uh, coming up, coming up, I think, early in the year. And there are a bunch of companies that offer online life insurance. Two of my favorites are Haven Life and Ladder Life, where you can uh, apply for life insurance online and get approved fairly quickly. I really, really like both of those as an option. They have a ton of calculators as well to figure out, you know, how much life insurance could you qualify for. A lot of good, you know, articles and blog information to help you really understand life insurance and understand its importance. And lastly, I would say if you're someone who has a side hustle or you run your own business, the best business account out there, hands down, is Novo, N-O-V-O. I absolutely love Novo. I have used them for years. They were amazing through the pandemic. And I just, I cannot say enough about Novo. So if you're looking for another or a new business bank account, I would check them out. All right, let, that takes us to best money books. This is a big, broad category, obviously, because we have so many people on the show that have written books and that are coming on the show to talk about their books. So, wow, I mean, <laughs> just so many great, great books out there. But what if I want to say best money books, I would, I think there's probably like six I would talk about that I would say, you know what, you probably need to have these on your bookshelf. And the first one is called The Soul of Money, Soul of Money. And it's just a great book about relationship with money. And, uh, you know, it's written by Lynn Twist and kind of the world's view of money. And I just, I think it's one of those books you can just come back to over and over again. And it's like a real healthy reset for you. And also a deeper understanding about money and the, and the meaning of money and the importance that we put on money. The second would be Happy Money. Uh, we've had Ken Honda on the show a couple of times. And gosh, if you do not own this book, you need to own this book or you need to listen to it on an audiobook. This book is just so great. You know, Ken talks about this idea of um, arigato, which is the Japanese word for thank you, and how we need to be saying arigato when money comes in, but also arigato when money goes out. We need to be thankful for the flow of money and how important the behavioral sort of mental side around money. It's just such a good read. It's a it's a smaller book, but oh man, I just I, I love happy money. The third would be Wealthy Gardener. And 
This is such a great book. It's a it's a series of stories told from this perspective of an old wealthy man who shares the financial wisdom that he's acquired over many years with the members in his community. And he's really showing them how to build wealth kind of step by step through short, meaningful um, anecdotes. And uh, it just really touched my heart. I, I love books that are just different types of money books that just get you to think and kind of open up your perspective around money. The fourth would be Happy Money, Happy Life. Uh, Jason has been on the show, and this is another great book. It looks at how your you know mental, emotional, physical, and just overall well-being connects with your financial wellness. And you know, we talk about self-care a lot, but we don't talk about money self-care. And so his book really dives into that. A couple other books I like is uh, Simple Path to Wealth. This is a great book that talks a lot about um, the simple ways to obviously build wealth, but to invest and just how to not make things so complicated. This is just a great read. Uh, And then Finance for the People. This is another, I'm going to say this with every book, right? This is a great book, but it it actually really is a great book that, that talks about all of the different things that we really need to know about money and looks at it from a broader perspective. So those would be six that I think you should absolutely have on your bookshelf if if I were you. There's a lot more that we can include on that list. Again, there's been so many great people on this show that have talked about books. It was really hard to pick my favorites. But I'm just, I'm a big fan of a book that is different, that takes a different perspective. You know, we've we've all read those books on how to how to start a budget and and how to save money and how to set goals and all of that stuff is so critically important. But there's a lot more to money. There are a lot more onion layers to money. And I think it's important to think about those and to talk about those. So last category leaves me with best money podcasts and also a category where there are a lot of people's show to to talk about and to uh, consider. And I have been just so in awe of the personal finance community. So many of these people uh, that have these podcasts are friends of mine. And I really just, I firmly agree with Joe Salcihai from Stacking Benjamins. He is actually my number one pick for Best Money Podcast on my list. But he has this perspective like, look, we need a lot of voices out in the money world, educating people and talking about money. You know, there's primary one big, loud, large voice. You probably know who I'm talking about in the uh, podcasting world when it comes to money. And we need just we need more perspectives. You know, you need to be able to listen to multiple people's voices. And I, I, because money is so personal, you need to just pick and choose what what works for you. And, you know, a little bit of advice from here, a little bit of advice from here, a little thing to think about from here, you need to just have that world to be able to choose from. And so the more people that can write about money, the more people that can write books and blog posts and have podcasts about money and, and can talk about money and can open up the dialogue I think is is so great. I think the only little like sprinkle caveat that I would give is I really want to make sure that if you are if you're taking somebody's course or you're investing in them a certain opportunity that they have, I really want you to make sure that you look through the lens of is this person qualified to teach me what they're teaching me? And I know I'm a bit biased because I actually am a non-practicing anymore certified financial planner. I'm a certified trauma of money expert. And I take very seriously what I do. And I take very seriously that you're here and you're listening to me and you're tuning into this content. So I want to make sure that um, I'm providing you with as much information as possible, but as much accurate information as I can possibly give. And also from the perspective that I have sat across from people, I've been responsible for helping people solve their money goals. And I've I've had to do that in a very ethical uh, manner. I think I, I take that very personally as, as just a high regard because money is so tricky and so complex. Okay, that is a very long-winded <laughs> introduction to Best Money Podcast. 
Number one would be Stacking Benjamins. I've been on their show many times. Joe has been on this show many times. He's going to be more of a face on this show coming next year. And they just have fun on the show. And that's what I love. It's it's not too serious. We all talk over each other. We all have opinions. And he has a lot of voices that are on that show. So I would definitely recommend Stacking Benjamins. Afford Anything would be another pick. Um, Paula Pant, who is the host of that show, she talks a lot about uh, real estate and investing and a lot of great, like, thought-provoking podcast episodes. So she would be another one to listen to. You probably have heard her on Stacking Benjamins, and you've probably heard Joe on Afford Anything. Another show would be Money Isn't Scary. We have an episode coming up actually next week with the host, Megan, of that show. And she is a certified financial planner, a practicing one. So she really, you know, sees, I guess, the the, the pol- polarity, right? We We want to hire people to help us with our money, but then nothing really changes. And so she comes back to this idea that we all feel like money is really scary and complex. So how do we tear it apart? How do we talk about all the little nuanced bits? So I was on her show recently. I think it's a great show for you to check out. Um, We also have Mind Money Balance, I think is another great show. She um, talks a lot about money from a, she is a money therapist. So there is that therapeutic approach. If you're looking for an investing show, Investing for Beginners is a great podcast to listen to. They have a ton of episodes all about investing. You can really kind of brush up and hone your skills. And the last podcast would be Bigger Pockets. And Bigger Pockets is this giant network. They they started out as a real estate investing show and they've got a money show and all types of shows. But they do a really good job. The shows are really well produced. And uh, I'm just a big fan. They have annual conferences. And gosh, they just do all sorts of things. So if you're looking to learn more about real estate investing, I would definitely check out Bigger Podcasts. And of course, thank you for having this show on your podcast list. Obviously, if you're listening, uh, this is a show, hopefully, that you will tune into many, many times to come. I know the end of the year is always a time where we're thinking about money and we're going to roll into the new year and we're thinking about all the goals and all the things that we want to do. And certainly we're doing that as well with this show. What do we want the show to be in 2024? And um, I have some just really fun things that I have planned and some big, bold directions that I want to move into with this show. So we'll see what happens. But I just really want to thank you for for being here, for being a listener, and um, you know, for making this show part of your rotation. I could not be here without you. And um, if you're listening, I would love for you to share this this show, this episode, with some of your friends. You know, shout it out on social media, just to help us continue to to grow the message of what I'm trying to do here, which again is is create a space where we value and celebrate self-worth over net worth. Net worth is great, and I want to help you build net worth, but I also want you to just feel good about yourself and not be so stressed out and freaked out about money all the time. So again, if you'd like a detailed list of everything that I talked about in this episode, you can go to etmpod.link slash best of 2023, and you can get the entire list downloadable with links so you can just go over and click to your heart's desire and... Um, see if some of these best of really line up with uh, what you're looking for. So I will see you back here in a few days, my friend, for a brand new episode.